thank uh, for uh, the invitation at this conference. Uh, actually, my presentation will be on a slightly different topic. Uh, um, it's going to be a very brief history of the Romanian left, the Romanian post-communist left. So there won't be too many avatars of Marx and Marxism. I mean, there will be from time to time. They will appear, but they, dis they will disappear just as often. Um, I'll, I, I've structured my presentation in two parts. The first one would be a sort of uh, a brief sketch of the class, class recomposition in Romania after 89. And the second part will deal uh, properly with the history of the Romanian post-communist left. Now, as for the first part, this, uh, uh, this attempt to sort of uh, fill in the, the social background uh, uh, on which the Romanian left uh, eventually emerged, uh, in this analysis I would start from, a, from an observation made by a brilliant Romanian scholar but who unfortunately writes very, very rarely, Gabriel Kinia, and he said that uh, contrary to Marx's prediction, uh, Perhaps capitalism didn't produce its own grave diggers, instead communism did. Uh, uh, which, which, which means that uh, practically uh, the, two, the classes that uh, 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 in their joint effort managed to, to overthrow communism were very much produced by the communist uh, regime. These two classes that practically overthrew, uh, overthrew uh, communism are, uh, of course, the working class, but also the middle class or, uh, let's say, a sort of a, a cultural petit bourgeoisie. Uh, now, the thing is that both these classes were consolidated and uh, somehow uh, uh, established in the more developed form only at the end of communism. This is obviously true for the working class, but it's paradoxically true also for the middle class. I mean, at the end of communism, the culture of the petit bourgeoisie, obviously all state employed, was already more consistent, more numerous, and more, more sure of its own destiny than before the, the communist time. Now, um, um, I, I was saying about this, uh, this alliance uh, against communism between the, the working class and the, uh, the petit bourgeoisie. Now, this alliance broke down immediately after their heroic uh, uh, revolution of 89 and after their uh, success in overthrowing communism. And what happens afterwards is a, is a dramatic class recomposition in Romania, whereby uh, the most important political actors are these two classes and more exactly the, the, the tension, the conflict between them. I start here from Selenius' famous thesis uh, articulated in Making Capitalism Without Capitalists, his idea that in Eastern Europe the main challenge regarding the restoration of capitalism was the lack of any capitalists. And as uh, you all probably know, his, uh, his um, answer to this, uh, to this uh, uh, dilemma is that uh, uh, practically the cu cultural bourgeoisie, the, the, the cultural uh, bourgeoisie, uh, assumed this uh, historical task of restoring capitalism. Now, this historical task that uh, uh, the cultural bourgeoisie assumed was, was mostly uh, pushed uh, on the agenda uh, against the interest and against the, the, the condition of the, of the working class. I'm obviously forcing a little bit things here, exaggerating, uh, since I have to, to condense a lot of information in a brief presentation, but I, could, I would say that uh, the first 10 years of, uh, of the post-communist transition, so until the 2000s, uh, the most important political conflict or social political tension was this, uh, this battle between the uh, petit bourgeoisie and the working class. Now, I'm not sure whether this is specific for, for Romania, whether this is specific for the whole Eastern Europe, or whether this is a general aspect. Uh, I find it a bit paradoxical because uh, um, uh, what this means is that all the other classes or all the other social uh, political important actors were participating in this battle, but through these two uh, representatives, the, the bourgeoisie and the, the working class. 
which meant that the, uh, uh, in Romania, at least uh, in the first decade, but uh, it, uh, it remained practically like this uh, uh, ever after, you had a very awkward uh, uh, structure of class alliances. On one hand, you have the working class, which is somehow allied or uh, 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 taken care of by the local capitalists or the local wannabe capitalists uh, and politically represented by the Social Democratic Party. On the other hand, you have the, the culture of petit bourgeoisie, which is allied somehow to the interests of foreign capital and is mostly represented politically by the center-right uh, center -right parties. Now, as I was saying, the, the first uh, post-communist decade witnessed this, uh, this ongoing battle between these two, with these two social actors, and I think that uh, the most uh, uh, illustrative uh, um, uh, event uh, uh, for this decade is the series of the so-called Mineriade, the, uh, the various ex violent expeditions of the miners to, to Bucharest, uh, where they sometimes uh, beat up uh, uh, the intellectuals protesting there, and sometimes eventually at the end were uh, beaten by the, uh, by the police state. Uh, so this is the, the political social scene of course, in its, in its essential dimension, uh, in my opinion, for the first decade. After the first decade, and even though they won the first battle, the working class uh, was utterly, utterly destroyed, utterly uh, uh, vanquished. Uh, I think the statistics uh, show that uh, one third of the working class has emigrated, one third of the working class is more or less unemployed or precariously employed, and one third of the old uh, communist working class is employed, but uh, in such conditions, in obviously much smaller enterprises without possibility of unionization, and of course with much more anguish concerning their job position. So, uh, drawing the line, the, the working class is, uh, is, uh, is vanquished by the end of the first uh, post-communist decade. Uh, it's interesting that uh, uh, the Romanian left, the Romanian left uh, of which I'm talking about here, was not uh, present uh, at, this, at this point. Oh, now what I, what, what, I, what, what, I, what I mean by this? When I'm talking about here, when I'm, when I'm talking about the Romanian left here, I'm not talking about the Romanian Social Democratic Party, which is obviously sort of the, the big elephant in the room. Why am I not referring to the Social Democratic Party as representing the Romanian left? Well, for various reason, reasons. First of all, it is not a Social Democratic Party. Uh, I'm not even sure whether, it, whether it, it is on the left or the center. Secondly, this is mostly a, a, a parties of cadres, very well established in the state institutions, but which means that it never tried to build an ideological hegemony. So the Social Democratic Party was very, very inactive uh, on the scene of civil society and practically left this field, this cultural ideological field, to be filled in by, by uh, uh, the center right. Now, this is the uh, ingratious terrain on which the Romanian independent left uh, appeared in the 2000s. Uh, so uh, I'm moving now to the to the second part of my my uh, brief uh, uh, brief history, the uh, proper history of the Romanian left, uh, Romanian independent left, which I divide. I think uh, one can divide this history in two in, in three uh, periods. We have first of all uh, the uh, so so called theoretical uh, left or cultural maybe. More, most, uh, more properly would be a, a, a cultural left. Then we have this, the second phase, which, which is the phase of the NGO left. And finally, and very, very recently, we have the beginnings of a, of a political party uh, organized uh, left. I'll try to uh, uh, pass each of these uh, uh, phases in, uh, in, uh, in review. Um, <clears throat> the interesting point about the first uh, phases of the Romanian independent left, what I call the, the cultural left, is that it originated in a split in the, in the cultural middle class, or in the cultural bourgeoisie. This is explainable by the fact that the, the proletariat was already vanquished, uh, part of it already left the country, part of it was, uh, was too much uh, scared for its own job to, to raise any political or social demands, 
which is why, uh, uh, paradoxically, yes, the Romanian independent left uh, is, uh, has its origin in an interior split of, uh, in the field of the, the cultural bourgeoisie, which, uh, why, why this field appeared, uh, I guess we can find explanation here, until the 2000, uh, the, in terms of ideological views, the Romanian society was quite uh, 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 obviously split between a pro-social democratic party, uh, its, elect its electorate of uh, the working class towards which uh, the social democratic party had uh, always had uh, a sort of paternalistic view, but nothing more. And on the other hand, you had uh, uh, the united bloc of the, the middle classes. Now, this united bloc of the middle classes finally splits uh, after 2000, but it splits, I think, for cultural reasons. Uh, there was a famous debate uh, which lasted from the middle of the, the year 2000 up to 2010, uh, a debate uh, against so-called boyars of the, of the mind, of the spirit, uh, and this is the, the debate from which the left originated. But the inter interesting thing is, uh, if one uh, reads today this famous debate, is that we, one cannot, uh, one cannot realize whether this was merely uh, a struggle for cultural power or whether there were really ideological or social and political issues involved. I think, to be fair to this debate, we could say that uh, there were some dividing ideological or social political lines between a sort of conservative uh, uh, cultural bourgeoisie and a more liberal democratic bourgeoisie. In any case, the opposition towards uh, the opposition to the to the conservative bourgeoisie was not articulated in leftist terms. It was articulated in, in pro-democratic terms with uh, various uh, uh, infusions from the postmodernist. Uh, uh, Postmodern uh, uh, and relativist uh, uh, vocabulary. Well, this is the this is the terrain in which the Romanian cultural left uh, uh, was born, and uh, one can see this uh, this sort of birthmarks, culturalist birthmarks on the Romanian uh, left in its first uh, uh, let's say collective declaration of existence. This is the the. So the first collective declaration of existence of the Romanian cultural left is, I think, uh, uh, the collective volume on, of uh, critical readings of the Tismanano report. The Tismanano report is uh, the popular name of the, of the uh, report of the Com presidential commission established by Tayan Basescu to analyze and eventually condemn uh, communism. What's interesting is that the, the Romanian's left critique of this Tismanano report was also uh, uh, practically uh, 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 formulated, articulated in culturalist terms of, along the same lines of opposition between a pluralist, uh, relativist, uh, democratic liberalism and a sort of uh, authoritarian conservatism. Most of the authors in this volume actually uh, objected to the Tismanano report only in terms of but there, can all, there, can, there cannot just be one truth uh, we have to take into account uh, more more perspectives, uh, and so on and so on. So this is uh, this is uh, already very significant for the future evolution of the of the Romanian left. After this uh, collective volume published in 2008, I think that the the period of maximum expansion of the Romanian left is uh, between the years 2010 and 2013. I would say. Obviously, because uh, that's when the, 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 the economic crisis uh, exploded also in Romania. The economic crisis was a bit uh, delayed in Romania uh, until after 2010 because, uh, because of the elections in 2009. Nobody uh, wanted to, to, uh, to accept that we were in a crisis. Uh, we had this surprise only after the, the election. In any case, uh, uh, the Romanian government had uh, some of the most harsh austeritarian measures, 25% uh, of the public employees' wages cut, and so on and so on, which finally, finally uh, reintroduced a sort of social political question on the agenda, and that's how the Romanian cultural left finally had a, a proper object. Because until, until this, this time, the, the subjects on which the Romanian left was uh, uh, sporadically, rarely uh, pr pronouncing itself was, 
war, the war in Iraq, which was not quite a, 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 an urgent and immediate question, and uh, as I was saying, various cultural cultural topics, uh, 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 political correctness, pro against stuff like that. Uh, now, this uh, period of uh, expansion, but when I'm talking about the Remain on Left and expansion, uh, you should take into account that I'm talking about the population of, uh, which ranges from few dozens of people, authors, to let's say few tens or maybe uh, tens of thousands uh, supporters or readers or activists or stuff like that. So it's a very, very, very small uh, uh, number of uh, this uh, uh, social category. Uh, however, the end of this first phase of the Romanian left, this cultural phase, uh, occurred because of at least, I think, two main reasons. The first is that uh, even though this uh, cultural explosion, this, uh, the various websites that appeared, were quite spectacular in, in themselves, at least compared to the previous epoch, uh, they, didn't, they didn't allow their authors to live by this war. Yeah? So, in spite of this uh, cultural explosion, most authors of the Romanian uh, cultural left scene uh, remained in a precarious position, which is why eventually they had to abandon this, uh, this sinking, sinking ship. Uh, the second reason is that, uh, as uh, it happened everywhere, Facebook and uh, the, uh, the, this kind of uh, internet platforms practically absorbed all the independent uh, internet, uh, internet websites. Uh, this was practically the end of the, the, uh, the cultural phase of the Romanian left, which led to the second phase, the what I call the NGO phase of the uh, Romanian left. Of course, this this passage has certain advantages and disadvantages. The, the advantage, if, if one wants to call it like that, is that there is a certain passage from theory, abstract theory, to uh, practice, concrete practice. Actually, this is, uh, this is an advantage because uh, uh, there is another aspect that I forgot to mention about the Romanian culture or intellectual left, which is the fact that most of its authors were schooled and educated abroad, which is why they returned to Romania uh, with various and quite aleatory uh, theoretical paradigms. One was a Zizek, one was a, one was with Laclau, one was with with uh, Marx, but not because we were uh, we were uh, uh, rediscovering certain lost traditions of Romanian, uh, I don't know, postmodernism of Marxism, but because we happen to be in, uh, in universities, in universities which have this, uh, this uh, theoretical uh, perspective. Uh, now, so, at, the, at least the one advantage that we can point to uh, in this passage from the theoretical or cultural left to the NGO left is that uh, Finally, the, social, the questions that the left uh, addressed were real or genuine, were, were somehow urgent. However, this passage obviously brought with itself a sort of uh, moralizing of the, of, the, of the agenda, of the political agenda, and even worse, a sort of localization of the, of the discourse. Yeah? So practically the national Romanian scene, uh, the national left Romanian scene was deserted uh, in this movement in which all, all the, most of the uh, ex-authors uh, became activists, uh, enrolled in NGOs and somehow managing to live, uh, to get a wage out of, out of this. Now if we look, at, look back at this second phase of the Romanian left, its NGO phase, I think the, the results are rather sad. Of course, the good thing is that uh, uh, a dozen of, or a couple of dozens of people managed to survive this, uh, this uh, uh, period. But <coughs> what concerns the object of, of their activist uh, uh, NGO activity, uh, I don't think that there is any, any change in, 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 uh, in, uh, in it. Uh, there were two, two subjects that these NGOs uh, uh, attacked attack or addressed most often, the subject of evictions and the subject of the Roma community. Usually these two are interrelated. Now, uh, if we look back at this period of, uh, of activism, we see that in, in spite of the million of millions of dollars of Norwegian funds that uh, 
have been uh, uh, have been uh, running through this uh, activity, very few changes are uh, are are to be seen in the condition of the evicted people and the Roma community. Well, luckily, this uh, this uh, second period of the Romanian left is now appears now to be over or appears now to move towards a more <coughs> articulated uh, uh, articulated campaign or articulated uh, uh, activity common activity. Uh, which brings me to the final stage, the third stage in this uh, short history of the Romanian left, the political party phase. This is, uh, things are here uh, quite recent. Uh, there is finally uh, a Romanian uh, left-wing party uh, to the left of uh, the Social Democratic Party. It's called Demos. It's been uh, finally officially registered like a couple of months ago and they are start, starting to gain a little bit of, of momentum. Of course, with, uh, with a lot of reservations, we are still talking about a small community of Facebook users, and uh, uh, this is again an inheritance of the cultural origin of the Romanian left. This is a party which is uh, made up in, in totality of, uh, of, uh, out of university uh, people, like lecturers. Actually, it's the second rank of the university hierarchy which is involved in this, in this party. We, what does this mean? It means that, again, there is a total, total uh, separation between this party and the social base that it should represent or, or for which it should fight, the proletariat. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a there is a very timid, very very uh, um, very uh, yeah very timid approach to politics uh, that this party tries to build. They are uh, they are for example pro EU, pro NATO, on the on the argument that everybody in Romania is pro NATO and pro EU, so you cannot you cannot have another electorate but this uh, this kind of people. So you have to go with the flow. Uh, <clears throat> well, and as for its activities so far, obviously there, there were only uh, conferences, debates, uh, uh, roundtables, and so on and so on. So I have my, my doubts towards the future, the possible future of this party. I'm not even sure whether it would be a good thing whether this party uh, could manage to actually steal some uh, uh, a significant number of votes from the Social Democratic Party, even though the Social Democratic Party has nothing to do with social democracy. But still, I'm not sure whether we should abandon its uh, its meager paternalism, the one of the uh, Social Democratic Party, and replace it with something that uh, uh, is not yet articulated, doesn't is not sure where to go, which is the, the discourse and the platform of this uh, new this new party. Um, I'm not sure whether I want to say anything more. Um, yeah, I do have a, a final question. Uh, I mean, a final comment. Um, as you can see, there is this culturalist uh, background, which is uh, very pronounced in the in the history of the Romanian left. It's a very intellectual left. Well, my problem or my my critique of it is that, uh, unfortunately, this left uh, didn't manage to do its only one job that it had to do, not the job of creating a mass party, not the job of uh, restoring socialism, obviously, but at least the job of producing a coherent account, a coherent narrative of what was communism and what was the post-communist capitalist restoration. So far, we still lack a uh, a coherent, a decent uh, account of these two major topics for any any theoretical left. So um, I will close on this. Uh